Welcome back to the Praise of the Debauchress. I want to talk about a story that came in from EV Magazine. How dating apps have made women too picky for the wrong reasons. And in the story they talk about that apps like Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble have both introduced ease and convenience to modern dating. Unfortunately, giving a woman a false sense of security. Listen, dating apps are just like social media. And it's the rational male, Rollo Tomasi, who makes the point of this. And I remember reading in his book, we're listening to his book on Audible. He makes the point where social media and the fact that we can go and meet people from anywhere around the world has really diluted, delusioned all women and men for that matter to think that, well, why do we need to just settle with somebody that's just in our backyard or somebody we could just drive to? Well, we could just fly to somebody and maybe we don't want to just have the, that everyday kind of feel of relationships. People just think now that it's normal to just say, okay, let's do long distance. Like there was long distance relationships before this, but now we're getting it so much where it's like PayPal. It's not like a uh, pen pals. It's not like you're, you know, dating someone on a regular basis. Like people think that it's okay to just continue to talk to somebody through text with no emotional quotient and then eventually get together. It doesn't make sense to me, but it's happening more often than, than ever. So what they talk about now, you're talking about with among millions of people, everybody says, well, now, you know, the market of people out there to go after and to meet, it's a bigger pie to go after. So I'm going to just keep being more and more filtering because maybe I'm a little bit fatter. Maybe I'm not as pretty. Maybe I'm older, but it doesn't stop me from thinking that there's that one person in the world. They always say that one person that you're going to find that's going to be the reason you're going to go ahead and settle with that person. But what we're actually doing to ourselves, we're basically just making it impossible to find anyone because that unicorn, we're going to keep looking for that needle in the haystack. We're going to keep going. It's not going to happen. People don't want to settle anymore. This is why people are happy to go ahead and get divorced on a regular basis. That's what's happening here. So in the story, they see here that millions of people are using dating apps in the U S just can't find Mr. Right. No matter, no matter how many apps we download, how many guys we swipe right on, unfortunately, the approach we take with regard to using apps to find boyfriends or even potential husbands, that's not blood over into how we approach all aspects of dating. And the problem is now, is the narrative's changed. Now there's the modern woman, and now we have the alpha male, the, the red pill alpha guys, right? We get this going on, the passport boys. All these tags, all these narratives now, stereotypes have been brought in because they're made so trendy and viral on, on social media, everything's changed. So now I feel like every time I watch TikTok, I mean, every time I see a woman that's really just delusioned or depressed because they can't find a good man, social media and dating apps are degrading and making it even harder to find a good person. And there's probably plenty of people that we run into in our lives that would be wonderful for us. And they were probably meant to be with us. But now social media has changed everything and the dating apps have made it worse. Don't get me wrong. I know for me, it's always about, yeah, I mean, listen, Tinder and hot or not, like hot or not was the first one. Then Tinder just really, they upped the game, made it much easier to get into. <clears throat> but the thing is now you're looking at just looks. It's nothing else. And the other problem too, it's not that there's not beautiful women on these sites that are good at, you know, taking photos. Some of them are very good and they do photo shoots and they are, you know, they're Instagram influencers or TikTok influencers and just know how to go ahead and get pictures done or get good photo shoots done. But then there's the other women that will put bad pictures out there. Some of the women that are so insecure about themselves, well, let's take this angle from as high as we can and let's try to cover up my, you know, my gut. I'm like, no, everybody's so worried about showing themselves and also the amount of makeup, the lashes, everything else. The authentic original, like, what do you look like coming out of bed when you're waking up in the morning? And then the other part is, well, we need to stand out. So let's put as much piercings or adornments on each other. If it's not adornments that we put on our uh, on ourselves to wear, we put them on us, which is the ink. I'm not judging anyone for that. I really am not. But I always make it a point like, okay, is it really for you or is it for everybody else? Or is it to cover up? some real emotional trauma you've gone through because remember that's the other problem <clears throat> just because you see somebody in person i mean you don't know what they've gone through you don't know what they've been through 
And you don't know what you're going to really find out from somebody that's really somebody you want to be with because if you ever meet with them, you're only going to get the, if you're going to meet with them long distance, you're not going to have that real time to go ahead and connect and bond with each other. You might think you could do that through text, but you can't. Or through FaceTime, you, you think you can't. No, not really. It's in, it's, a, it's an interpersonal, in-person reaction. But nobody wants to do that anymore. They go on to talk about how dating has evolved with the mod modernity. <clears throat> if you're young, single, and feel as you're not meeting people, you inevitably download a dating app. It's not a matter of if but when. But the thing is, for young men and women, you're at your prime attraction, your prime appeal. If you're under 30, you should never be on a dating app, honestly. And let's put it like this. <clears throat> we know that dating apps now are kind of just hookup sites because some women don't want to be put in that. And then you got to ask yourself, okay, if they're just in there for the hookup, why are they only looking for the hookup? Why are they not looking for something more when they should expect or, or want something more? There's something wrong with that. So you have to judge who's on the sites and what they're there for. So they're just fuck boys and fuck girls, and that's what they are. And then you move along and say, okay, what about the fact that you can be approached at any time by so many different people because you're young, beautiful, handsome, whatever it is, man or woman, and there are people out there that want to talk to you. You're the ones that are most desirable, the most approachable, the most appealing. Let the people come to you. Or go to them. Or guys, you should be able to go and approach. Women, you should want to embrace the approach. And then what you do is, it's just like a Tinder or a Hinge or a Bumble. You swipe. You reject. If you do not like, they don't stay. And guys, if you don't like them, you get to choose which ones you want. And sometimes you find out somebody that might be good for you and you don't realize it until you talk to them. Until you get to know them. And you take a little bit of time to go ahead and, you know, embrace and who they are. So that's because uh, maybe you'll find out if you're not att necessarily attracted to them. Any young, beautiful woman, you know, if you're going to talk to them for a little while and you don't necessarily find the attraction in them, it's not going to be on how they look. It's what they're going to say and how they are and what they think and how they feel. That's going to attract you. And that's the kind of woman that usually goes down to be like a long term girlfriend or a wife. And that's a good thing. But with all that's going on here, what are you going to do? Women are critical creatures, and this brave new world of dating has only exacerbated that trait. When we meet someone in person, it's very easy to be specific about what exactly we liked and didn't like about them. Maybe they made an offhand comment that was offensive or drank too much, were impolite to our friends. Dating apps, that discernment is almost non-existent. So we resort to other means of evaluating. Weird hair, gives off jerk vibes, creepy smile. Right. You're getting them... Not as the person of the art. Let me tell you, people don't realize this part, but you know, when I did dating apps early on, talking about either eHarmony or Yahoo Personals or Love at AOL, those early days, sure, pictures might not have been great. And remember, whoever took pictures, you didn't get the phones that had the nice cameras now. But I'll tell you what, more times than not, when you get to meet somebody in person, I guarantee it every time. That woman was more attractive than she was in her pictures. Her pictures never did justice. Always looked better in person. And it happened so many times. And then there's the whole idea of where, okay, six-figure income, six-pack abs, six foot tall or more or higher. <clears throat> now you've had certain characteristics of your ideal guy in mind when you first got on the Tinder at Hinge, but no success. And you might find yourself swiping right less and less. Our mind does a quick mental catalog of attributes when confronted with a few photos and awfully poorly written blurbs and complete uh, about a complete stranger's identity. The photos alone might be enough to turn us off. Psychology of what makes a swipe left or right is fascinating. But one study found that both men and women spend more time on the profiles. They find unattractive end up swiping left on the profiles. They find attractive. How about that? Women on average spend almost seven seconds on the unattractive profiles, 3.19 seconds on the profiles they like and end up swiping right on. Yeah, so you're taking less time to somebody you just think looks good. And we know that, that not, that's not always necessarily the case. Right. So men and women approach these situations differently. And women tend to be more discerning about profiles they find puzzling. Men take little or no time at all to pinpoint what they find attractive and unattractive about a profile. Correct. 
and dating apps operate more or less on making snap judgments based on physical appearance alone and being attracted to a person is a crucial and often underappreciated component of a romantic pursuit and so there's that part and there's a lot of guys because of that mindset so easy to remember only date men who are six feet tall make six figures and have a six pack that's what do they always say on that one show yeah that's like what the top five percent of men 95 percent of men are out outcast so what are they going to be and if you're judging by your online dating pool by factors like height education or income and other hyper hyper specific or particular factors do you also meet those same standards right but the thing is this is where they got wrong we don't need women to meet those standards okay we don't worry about women being six feet tall or being six figures we might care about there's plenty of guys that will care about her to be a, a particular shape. Sure. Me, I definitely scratch out that last part. I'm not worried about a woman that's got, that's a little bit chubbier or thicker. That's a preference. I've always said that. And so they're talking about in this article about if we hold others, others to high standards, it's only fair we hold ourselves to them as well. And it's important to have expectations but the criteria that you have is not absolutely integral to fundamental attraction or the quality of relationship. And you know, it's the matter of if you think there's high standards, what it's not so much high standards, it's a quality person in your life instead of quantity. You want to find somebody that, because remember those six foot tall, six figure income <clears throat> and six pack abs. Listen, that guy's not gonna be able to keep that body all of his life. The six figure income, maybe it'll get bigger, but maybe you're not gonna be around for it because it's not gonna matter what your career is. It's not gonna matter that you have all these attributes as well because there's a standards for men, standards for women, and men don't have those kind of standards. This is the part where they get wrong here about with women that they need to go ahead and match standards. If you're looking for that, you're limiting who you have in your dating pool and you're going to realize that, okay, yeah, they might have sex with you because you might be attractive and all, but that's all you're there for. Because the traits of a natural biological woman that's really born to fact, you know, as a nurturer, as a mother, as a, as a supporter, and as a patriarch, like that's all important. It might not be good for everybody. And listen, it goes also for people that are not traditional. You know, when it comes to, whoever might be dominant or submissive, it still comes down to the dominant should have the standards of protection and the love and support and the leader of somebody else falls like things like that. But we don't get that as much. I'm going to leave my diatribe right there. Cause if you don't want to deal with your dating apps, you don't want to worry about trying to meet standards to meet standards. Then you could just go out and use what the dating apps are there for, for people that want to be depraved and debaucherous. The 